Yeah, I was going to show this uh, setup, the float assembly, and explain how it works uh, when the gas tank was out of the Jeep here. But, you know, it's actually easier to show it when it's, you know, I got a new one here. And uh, I may not even have a problem with the old one. But um, I think you know how the float assembly works. But let me just explain this because this will tell you if the problem is the vote if you have a gas gauge and it says E and you put gas in it why does it not work it'll tell you if it's the gauge itself or the float assembly how do you know so you notice on this float assembly I have one wire hooked up to where the wire connects from the fuel gauge and I have one on the other side to the body in other words that's the ground so when if this wire you know which probably is the problem with this it's probably not the float assembly but i got a new one because i'm taking out the gas tank this actually was a replacement gas tank um and i'm gonna flush it out with vinegar get all the rust out of it and use red coat and i was been waiting for the weather to get a little warmer because there's a there's a temperature range of when you can do this with the red coat um but you know, I was going to change the float assembly anyway. The problem, which is probably what's wrong with the one that's in there, it's probably this connection here is bad. It may not be the float assembly itself, but typically what breaks is usually this connection or the float assembly gets uh, corroded or something or falls apart or has a hole in it. But you'll be able to tell if you fill it up and it's going up, then it drops. Usually that's what happens. Usually it has a hairline hole in it. But often it's the electrical connection. So, you know, in other words, I have an ohm meter on here if you see this. And when the float is down position, you can see it's in a down position. As I raise this, let me put this this way. You can see that a little bit better. If you can see that. Anyway, maybe you can't because of the glare. But as you raise it up, you can see, you see what happens? In other words, it's like the ground is com is getting completion, and that is what's making the fuel gauge go to full. So as this goes up, and as you bring it down, you can see it changes. The, you know, in other words, you got more resistance. So you know, not, typically it could be corrosion or something like that, but a lot of times it isn't the gauge, and a lot of times it isn't even a float assembly. It's usually the wire where it's connected to the float assembly or it needs to be uh, there's not a good ground going on here you know that's really what's going on so the way you check your gauge is you find this wire that goes to the top of the float and if you ground it out and when you turn the key on you'll see the, the gauge go all the way to full you know the gauge is working and it problems in the float and then from there what you want to do is to make sure that where the wire attaches to the top of the float it's all good and clean and if that's not the you know if that's the case then you got a bad float assembly and you got to change it out so i'm changing this one out anyway because i'm dropping the gas tank actually i want to say something else here too um you know i may change out the carburetor in this thing to uh, a toyota and i've been researching very well on the internet the best carburetor for this this is a weber that's supposed to be the best weber going for this it actually has the vent for the float up here it's already vented for the high angles and i know they got the float assembly in the front on this samurai but it may work very well but i may get a toyota because it looks very stock and actually what you do is you go to nationalcarburetor.com and you get a carburetor to look up is toy t-o-y 250 that's the correct one you mount it with the float assembly in the back and you have to do a couple things to actually open up the the spacer plate a little bit and that's what's going to probably i'm probably going to get that anyway you know if i don't like this carburetor the other thing i'm going to do and just i want to throw this in this on this video these well, actually what happens a lot with these webers and it does make a lot of sense because i was very careful how to put this on i never really liked the way this ran and if you notice down here this gasket is fairly thick, and that's a damn problem. This get you what you want is a thinner gasket, and you want to make sure those surfaces are machined perfectly flat. Now you don't necessarily have to take it to a machine shop. You can use a file, but you got to be very careful the way you use it. 
and you take a very little bit you know in other words just enough to take maybe a thousandth off and there's also some stuff from permatex it's like a red spray it's not it's nothing to do with uh, you know rtv it's a red spray and you put it on both sides of the gasket it really holds up because i noticed when i flooded this out there's a little fuel coming out here that's telling me there's a vacuum leak there's a vacuum leak right there a small one even though this is torqued down correctly uh, I think it's just the way they make these adapter plates and stuff. That's 90% of the problem. But I'll probably go to a Toyota carburetor on this, even though. But I wanna, I'm curious about this carburetor because it's rare as dodo eggs. It's a uh, Weber RGM 601. It's supposed to be better performance than a Weber 38s on a Samurai. And it's supposed to actually get better mileage than the 3638 at the same time. And it looks like the bowl, the way the fuel bowl is vented, it won't have any problems with the angles on a, on a extreme terrain. So, but I ain't sure if it's going to work out as perfect as their BS advertising. I know one that works 100% correct is that one I'm talking about. It's the Toyota Corolla carburetor. It's from like the 74 to 78. It's on a 1200 engine, 1200 cc engine. There's a slight little modification you have to do on the adapter plate. If I get that, I'll actually post a video on it. But actually, I'll post a video on how I get this thing tuned up perfect if it has a problem. And, uh, you know, that's the real skills of a mechanics. You don't just slap parts on. you got to know how to do this shit right. And uh, a lot of times, this car probably has no problem. It probably is the adapter plates are not machined exactly perfect. And that gasket needs to be a little bit thinner. And you use a little bit of that Permatex spray. If it's perfectly flat, it'll stick on there. That stuff is very fuel resistant. And uh, you have an extremely good bond then, no problem. So anyway, this is really about the, uh, the float assembly. And, uh, you know, it's usually, um, you know, it could just very well just be the connector on a float while your gas gauge doesn't work. But that's how you could tell. If it's the gauge or the float, if you ground out the wire going to the float with the key ignition key on, your gauge should go to full. So that's how you check it.